The San Francisco 49ers may have their hands full this week with the Arizona Cardinals coming into town. Who's going to be the biggest threats for the 49ers in week five? We're going to get down to my top five biggest threats. Stick around. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Biggest Threats, presented by the Wayne Breezy Show. We got some fun today. We got Residency, who's sponsoring us. Make sure you check them out over at Residency.com. Use that promo code SFBREEZY. You don't want to miss out on saving while saving. They got a sale going on right now, so use that promo code so you can save even more. All right? You're going to want to make sure you guys do that listen i got some threats here and you know i made a boo-boo didn't type them all out but you know what i got them right here you know what i'm saying let let me go ahead and get these slides uploaded so we can have some fun and we could talk about the biggest threats the arizona cardinals it's weird they're like the weirdest one in three team i've seen like like in a long time i mean they're they have a bunch of consecutive scoring drives going on like they score on every first drive i feel like it's almost impossible to keep them from scoring on their first drive. The question is, how do you limit them after it or if they score? Can the 49ers break that streak? That's going to be something to pay attention to. Um, you, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how the 49ers really game plan for their division rival, uh, the Arizona Cardinals. So I got some things I'm going to type up real quick. Uh, I thought I had this stuff typed up. My apologies. Um, but I do have the presentation for you. So I do got my five players. I hope you're not mad at these five players. Looking at this team, they got some players. They have way more than five players that I feel like can be big threats to the San Francisco 49ers. But I'm going to go with the obvious five. All right. Um, this probably will be the first threats video that i've done with almost all everybody on the offensive side crazy right almost everybody on the offensive side i got kyler murray trey mcbride james connor marvin harrison jr and buddha baker let me make sure i put the junior i don't want to get dad i don't want to get make dad upset because I, I i said him and i and i meant junior so marvin harrison jr be my top threat like like one of my top threats so let's get down to it man Kyler Murray, you already know who he is. He is a mobile quarterback. Now, listen, mobile, I'm going to say dual threat because he likes to throw the ball as well. This dude can throw the ball. I don't want to sit there and say he's not a thrower or a passer in the league. As of right now, though, the way defenses have been playing him, they've been, like, you know, not containing him much, pushing him outside. Getting, making him run outside the pocket. I'm sitting here. I was going through the Washington film, and he was pretty much like being pushed out of the pocket to where he was able to make plays with his feet. You want him to extend the play, but you don't want him to take off running. Uh, you want him to actually try to throw the ball. And if he dink and dunks you, okay, you live with it. Um, but, you know, what makes Kyler Murray most dangerous um, in a threat to the San Francisco 49ers is his ability to take off and run if he gets the outside. So the Niners got to figure out how they're going to keep him in the pocket opposed to allow him to get outside the pocket. So they're going to want to make sure that they contain out there, right? And so that would probably be one of my keys to victory. You can read this article, too, on www.49erswebzone.com. It should be up there. So I, I'm a little bit nervous when it comes to Kyler Murray, although I feel like the Niners – do their due diligence with with Kyler Murray. I feel like they do pretty well against Kyler Murray. I mean, he doesn't he hasn't thrown much. Like he's only thrown for thirteen hundred yards for uh, against the San Francisco 49ers. and he has a two and four record against the San Francisco 49ers. So that's something just to be mindful of. He only has seven touchdowns and he has four interceptions. And you know, like I I just feel like you want him throwing the ball. The Niners. Want him throwing the ball, especially this defense. The way his defense is built, let him throw the ball, um, make him beat you deep if he can. Now, that's the key 
to their offense. They have a weapon now out there in their offense. That My number one threat is Kyler Murray, though. It starts with him. My number two threat is a wild card piece. And, yeah, I put the tight in there. Now, I don't know the status as of now uh, of Trey McBride, their tight end. He was out last week. Uh, due to a concussion so because of the concussion protocol he was not able to play on last week i'm going out on a limb saying he's going to play this week so if he plays this week the niners need to make sure they pay attention to the tight end this would be the most uh i would say this would be the best tight end that they've had to face all season long all right i feel like trey mcbride is a top five top tier tight end in the league um he's george kittle-esque george kittles is one of george kittles favorite tight ends too by the way a guy that's been the tight end university we all know that's george kittles camp and so he's been endorsed by george kittle with that being said he can be a problem out there especially in the check down game niners playing good coverage down the field here comes the tight end slipping out underneath next thing you know kyler murray has enough time to get the ball to trey mcbride trey mcbride feces Oh, feasts over the middle of the field is where he gets most of his plays from the zero to nine yard uh, range in the middle of the field. Now, the Niners did their due diligence last week against Hunter Henry, held him to two catches, I believe only 12 yards, right? And so can the Niners do it again against Trey McBride uh, if he's cleared to play? They're going to have to because if they allow him to catch those type of passes, he will extend plays, he would extend drives, and the Niners need to get off the football field. They definitely need to make sure that they're getting off the field on third down, they're getting off the field on third down, they're getting off the field on third down, right? So they want to come with those third down stops and, and get it to fourth down so that way they can force the um, Arizona Cardinals to punt the ball, something that they're not doing much of this season. So Trey McBride happens to be my number two. You can place him. If you don't have him on your list, that's perfectly fine, but this is a player that I feel like can be a threat to the San Francisco 49ers, especially in coverage when you got to cover and then he runs his routes and now you got one of the young safeties having to cover Trey McBride or a linebacker that doesn't have the speed to cover Trey McBride or can be physical enough going against a Trey McBride. So pay attention. Keep your eyes on Trey McBride. Number three is the tone setter for me. Uh, number three is the tone setter for me. That is James connor like this is the guy that they're gonna run their offense through and however well he goes their offense will go so yes kyler murray is a threat yes trey mcbride is a threat but the tone the tone of the game will be set by james connor you know it's a fun fact james connor the 49ers have not allowed james connor to rush for 100 yards on them He's played them, I believe, several times, at least six times, and he has not been able to eclipse the 100-yard mark. Now, listen, go back to 2021. He had 97 yards, 96, 97 yards. He had like 77 yards catching. I feel like you got to make sure, don't forget about his pass catching ability and make sure you find a way to not allow him to set the tone. He likes explosive plays. He leads their team with nine explosive runs. James Conner is a problem. He's a beast. And we know the last time that we played, we held him to 80 something yards. But here's the thing he was setting the tone, setting the tone, setting the tone. So we don't want James Conner to come out there and be more physical than the 49ers defense. Now he's got to bring that physicality, right? Right? That's important, right? Don't allow James Conner to come into your stadium and punk you. You got to do the punking. So I need the Niners to be the bully. Keep an eye on James Conner. He does not give up. He will chip and chip and chip away. Not as as he doesn't run as hard, I guess, like a like a Jordan Mason. But I don't know something about he runs very violent. Like he does run violent. Like he's skilled. He understands his his vision. He understands his cutting ability. He has the speed to get to the outside. Like this is a veteran in the NFL that you know has settled and set himself right here in Arizona. So gotta pay attention to James Conner, or he is going to give the 49ers one of the longest days out there on the football field. Gotta go with the rookie star. Marvin Harrison Jr., that's right. Marvin Harrison Jr., a.k.a. Jr. We got to go with him. Listen, this kid's going to be a beast in the NFL. He has four touchdowns right now on the season. Uh, he's their leading, I believe, their leading receiver as well. And, you know, it, it, pick your poison, right? My, my thing is make Mar Marvin Harrison Jr. beat you deep. 
Don't let them beat you underneath. Now, the Niners do pretty good when they play deep coverage, deep uh, coverage down the field, and they force Kyler Murray to go underneath. If you do that, the Niners got to make sure they tackle. Me personally, I would like to say, see the size of Mooney Ward on Marvin Harrison Jr. Try to jam this guy up at the line of scrimmage. He does have moves. His touchdown last week was like a nice little fade route in the end zone because he put the moves on, on the commanders and got wide open. So kid can run routes, right? And so he can score uh, short game. He can score me uh, intermediate routes, the medium uh, gain, you know, 10 to 19 yards. And I'm talking down the field, 20 plus yards. Like Marvin Harrison Jr., they are targeting him down there too. He has seven targets down there. He has only three receptions, but two of his touchdowns are from that. And that probably happened in week two after he had a slow week one. So go back to week one. Watch how he was defended in week one, I believe, against the Buffalo Bills and find a way to take away Marvin Harrison in that deep threat. Uh, if not, don't sleep on the rookie. He will have a big day. He's a big threat. And number five, I had to go to the defensive side. I said there's a bunch of players on offense, but I don't I, they, they they won't be big threats. They can they can they'll probably get a you know some play, but they won't be big threats. Defensively, though, my their favorite their best defensive player on their unit, all right. It's Buda Baker. Buda freaking Baker. Buda Baker is the guy that you want to model your game after. And let me tell you right now, he's super physical, super tough, and he loves to tackle. Now, what you want to do with Buda is get him in the coverage because that's where he struggles. I could see George Kittle, Buda Baker matchup all night long. May the best man win. That's how I look at it. But listen, don't sleep on Buddha because he's going to be around that line of scrimmage. He's going to be in that box as a safety. He will I, like that's why I said the Niners need to make sure that he's the guy playing back, not Jalen Thompson. They got to figure that out. And sometimes they'll come out with three safeties. Now you got to kind of like figure out who's assigned to do what. I can tell you right now, Buddha Baker has the skill set to force turnovers. He has the skill set to intercept passes but again he's struggling right now at least this season in coverage he's struggling this season in coverage just looking up his stats i mean he's he's he, he's given up nine receptions on 11 targets all right so he's struggling in coverage right he's given up nine receptions on 11 targets 400 yards and 43 of those are yak yards he hasn't given up a touchdown but he's struggling in coverage so if you're the san francisco 49ers if that's his weakness this season, you try to find a way to take advantage of it over the middle of the field. This could be over the middle of the field type of game for the 49ers, depending on how they, they – the Niners need to dictate, in my opinion – what Buda Baker does. Don't lose sight of Buda. Buda will line up and blitz. He will rush. He only has one pressure on the season, but that's going into week five, right? <laughs> he only has one pressure on the season. It was a hurry. He forced the quarterback to throw the ball. But here's the thing. Don't sleep on their defensive scheme. No, they're not a blitzing team, but they will blitz the Niners because they've watched other teams blitz the Niners. And Buda Baker can be on a safety blitz, and that can be detrimental to the San Francisco 49ers if they are not prepared. So be prepared for Buda Baker. Those are my top five threats. Let me know what you think uh, in detail. I'll be putting out a reel as well very shortly so you could check that out. It'll be quicker uh, if you don't want to watch the whole video. Make sure you like this joint. Feel free to hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. I truly would appreciate it. All right. And feel free to share it. Grab the link. Share it into your groups. Share it wherever you like to talk about football. All right. If you're on Facebook, grab the link. Let everybody know who I am. Put it inside the group. Hey, man, these are the players that Breezy's saying we need to look out for. Let's let's look out for them. Do your boy a favor. Keep it solid. Keep it faithful to the Bay. Until the next time, we out.